Right, this is the kit of the Festiniog flying bench, as it's referred to. This is shown fully built with two little men on it, sat at two meters distance. So this is what you're about to build. It follows the same basic principles as my other Festiniog coaches. The same chassis running gear, same seating arrangements, except it obviously has different ends and an open top. So we'll uh, remove the men and go into a bit more detail. So we've got seating detail, planking detail, end detail. And underneath we have, if I take it off, a running chassis. This is the standard chassis that fits all my Festinial wagons. And then underneath, again, same style as the other ones, square open box for it to load into, which allows you to set the distance height-wise by packing. This one again has the same height off the rail of 10 millimeters. Overall length is the same as the previous ones. And I'll just run through those details. Comes with plastic or metal wheels. The metal wheels are AccuCraft Z3s, which I modify to suit my ball race system. Has brake gear information or brake gear details on the sides. So I'm going to just drop him back on. Couplings are binny couplings. Access to the nut is through a small slot underneath. Construction is MDF and 0.9 millimeter plywood. Give you some details now. It weighs approximately 250 grams. Buffer to buffer is 200 millimeters. Width is 110. Buffer very has got a variable slot, so you can move the buffer up and down between 25 and 28 millimeters. Um, not a lot more else we can say about it. Uh, more information can be available by looking at the videos of my other wagons. So this is what the instructions now follow that you will be making. Please have fun. Any problems, drop me an email. Uh, or if you break any parts, again, drop me an email and I'll post them off to you. Thank you. The right, next part we're going to construct is the chassis come running gear. So we'll start off by fitting the bearings to one of the underframes. So you need to locate underframe number four. And you can see that's got a bar on the bottom. You turn that over so you can't see the number. And then you place the ball race in with the flange facing up. And you do that on the other number four as well. Again, turn it over so you can't see the number. Ball race in. Ball race in. And then find part number five. Okay, turn that over so you can't see the number. And just click that in behind. And then lay that down. The reason we do that is, as you can see, the ball race does protrude slightly beyond. And we need to use part five as a packer before we glue it. Again, number four with the ball races in, take number five, turn him over, and then plug him down. So now we have to run some super glue around the edges just to lock the ball races in. We don't need much, because it will do a capillary action. Bit top and bottom and tease it round and if you do that on all the other four right now is a good time to lubricate the bearings so I've now just obviously I've now stuck my four on so take the back piece number five off turn them over and you can see the little balls and just put a small drop of three in one I use doesn't matter what sort of oil, 
just to give the boards a little bit of a coating of oil because when it's actually assembled it's not the easiest place to get to. Right, so that's now lubricated the bearings, we can now start to put the chassis together. Right, the next part we're going to do is to fit the axle boxes. So you need to find four of those. That should be in focus, there we go. And they get fitted to part number six. Bring it into focus. And they go, fairly obvious I think, and they actually glue into that location there. Now it's very important that the actual bottom faces there line up with each other. So I'll show you the way that I tend to do this. And I'll just zoom in. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Right, for this I use a white PVA glue. Uh, I won't glue it for the moment, I'll just run through what I do is. Get your bit of glue, just a blob of small white PVA, drop it into there, and then drop your part down on, and then using, in my case it's a part of the chassis, but use the same thing if you like, it's important that it touches the end. So if we line it up and push it in hard, and then line up the axle box, also pushing in against the upright piece, and then push down, and now you know that it's level with the bottom. And then you do that on the other three locations. Well, that's my four glued on. And then while the PVA glue is still wet, if you get any oozing out, now's the time to go around the knife blade. Just remove any of the excess. If you wait until it's dry, you'll find this quite a difficult task to do. The other thing to make sure that when you're doing it is that the half rings are facing up. As you can see on the four I've done here. Right, let's move on to the next part. Alright, now let's start to assemble it. So we start off with the base. And if you find parts number five, you'll find they've got a lug. Let's move it into the middle so you can see. Well, they've got a lug sticking out, so that goes into there. It's very straightforward with the numbers facing out. So that's number five. If you do the same with the other number five, again, number facing out. And then the numbers count down as they go in. So if that's five, the next one we have to fit is four, and again with the numbers facing out, you'll find that just slots in where the bearings go. Same for that number four, and then find number three, just rest them in there, hold them with your finger and thumb, and number three, again writing to the outside, and then number two, right into the outside, the other number two, right into the outside, number one, and the other number one. And just roughly align them with each other. Then we fit the wheels. And sort of prise it apart to do the job drop them down into the bearing holes. Just have to manoeuvre it around a little bit to make sure they go in. Then we do the same on the other side, or other end. Spinning round. Again, force it apart. Tight fit. That's got those in position. Now we put the spreaders in. And they go into, just hold it up so you can see, there's a slot on part number one, there's a slot on the other side, 
you'll see there's a little lug and then just go in to the lugs, into the holes in it may be you've got to lift it out of the, the hole to slide it across it's quite a finicky job to do and it'll all drop back in again and we go around and we do the other end again line up one side with the slot and then lift the other side up slightly to move them out so the spreader drops into its slots line everything back up wheels rotate now we can put the end pieces on you can see two holes line up with the two pins and the other pins line up with the base it's quite straightforward spinning round do the same the other end that locks that in quite nicely and we've got the final pieces which is number six, goes on to the outside there, and number six goes on to the outside there. Now it's beneficial at this point to put an elastic band around it all. everything is pushed down firmly onto the base plate and then just while holding it firmly double check the wheels rotate we now have to glue all this in position so this is best done with super glue and I'll go through what we have to do Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to run some, we're holding a bit of pressure to hold it together. We're going to run some super glue along that area there, which will hold those together. So I'm just going to put a super glue, rub it around a little bit, so that it soaks down into the joints. Do the same on the other side. the edge and then take a small piece of tissue and just dab off the excess and then while you're holding that there just run some super glue down into the corner And the same on the other corner and along the bottom making sure the end is pushed in firmly and then slowly move back again keeping pressure downwards make sure everything is pushed down firmly and move on to the spreader Again, a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on the top, same on the other side, and then in the middle. By which time we can release, turn them around, and we do exactly the same at the other end. So again, a little bit of pressure, make sure the end piece is pushed in. Super glue, make sure it soaks in. And 
to show you. Again, same as the other end when we're holding it. Just go into the corners. Along the bottom. Making sure this piece is firmly pushed in. Back to the spreader. Again, push down. bottom, middle, and come back to the middle section, a little bit there, a little bit there, and then we put that to one side for about 10 minutes to dry. Right, once you've allowed that to dry, just remove the elastic band. The next thing we have to do is to glue six laminates together. And again, we use super glue and just rub it over the top, the wick down inside. And then we have to pull those edges together. Now you can either pull it with your fingers and hold it or use one of these little clamps which I use. It just clamps that and turn around. We do exactly the same on the other side. Put it backwards and forward. And again, either hold with your fingers or use a second clamp. And again, we leave that for about 30 seconds. It's long enough for the super glue to go off. And when the glue has gone off for about 30 seconds, remove the clamp and with a bit of tissue, soak up the excess glue. We do the same on the other side. That's your chassis constructed. So at this point uh, be handy just to make sure that it runs true. So you need to take a bit of track, put the chassis on, and check it runs okay. And there's no slop, no sideways movement. There shouldn't be if you built it on a flat board. And you'll find because it's got ball races, it does run very, very smoothly, very, very freely. So that's the chassis part done. The next part you're about to construct will end up looking like this here. But in the actual instructions to build it, there's a slight change in one of the parts. As you'll see, this one has some little notches on the end. They are particular for the flying bench version, which is obviously what you're building at the moment. But the instructions will show this piece without the notches. Just disregard it and treat it as though it's got notches. Right, we're now going to construct the seating area, which then the actual body is built around that. So we have a base, which has got engraving on one side and has got indentations cut into the other side. Two look like that. Nodules on the bottom, small nodules on top, there's two of those. And there's two with nodules sticking out bottom, plain on top, that's those two. One capping strip, a single piece, and two end pieces. Now the first thing you've got to do is to clean out the actual holes that have been cut. Well not holes, indentations. Now the best way to do this is with a, a small screwdriver. I'll just bring it up so you can see it in detail. As soon as we come into focus. There we go. Now, 
in that area there, just want to rummage around with the screwdriver just to get rid of the carbon. And once you've done that, using either a fiberglass bristly brush or, in my case, an old toothbrush, or use the wife's toothbrush, but don't tell her, and just, just to clean out the actual hole itself, or not the hole, the indentation. And you do that on all the other ones. So go ahead and do that. And don't forget to do it on the two smaller pieces. And just have a rummage around and it'll break all the carbon up. Right, I've done that. Now we do a quick check to make sure that we don't have any problems putting this together. So if you take a piece that's got the very small sticky out bits and you'll see that there's three that we've cleaned up there. That goes in just goes into those little holes all the way along. And you should be able to hold it and not see any light through it to make sure you're down firmly and there's nothing blocking where the legs go in. So I'll just bring that up close so you can see what I've done. There we go. And it goes with the markings to the outside as I've shown there. So that's a trial fit. Do the same on the other side. Again, make sure it goes in there and is a good fit. And then the end pieces, again, they should drop into the indentations. They do. And last of all, is to make sure the back ones line up with the little ones there. You'll see how it all goes together in a moment. So that goes in there, that's okay. So we check that on all of them. I will do. Right, the next job then is to flat surface Again, making sure the printing is on the outside, pushing down into there, then add the next one, which is the end one, and pull it in tight, and it should almost click in, and then put the other end one in, and then again, making sure you've got the printed side facing out. And you find it does actually stay together quite well. So we now have to glue that in position. Make sure it's pushed down firmly into the slots underneath and is squeezed tight against this one. Make sure you've got no gaps or you've got no rubbish caught in the bottom of those little holes. And then we use super glue. And we go in on the corners, at the top, at the top and down the edge, and on the bottom, and a little bit where the actual tangs go in. And just hold that for a while. Spin him round. Again, we do exactly the same. This end, push down, squeeze, make sure it's all firmly down. Again, we go in on the ends or corners. Then, where the tongue drops in. Let that wick in. Again, 25-30 seconds is more than adequate. And then move to the middle section and just push down 
and again where the lugs touch along the bottom just add a little bit of super glue again keep some downward pressure on there that's your seating area again make sure that there's no gaps running along there or gaps running along there that it's seated down quite nicely right so that's now all done so the next job we're going to do is to actually fit the base as you can see it's fairly obvious it's got planking on it and it goes that way up and you'll find that it drops quite nicely into all the cutouts make sure you put it on the right way up so that you can see the planking detail all the way around and when you glue this one it's important that the sides let me take this off and I can show you you don't want the sides pushed in like that you want them slightly pulled out so it runs down the sides if it's pushed in then the chassis won't actually fit in so what we do is position that on there what I tend to do is just start at one end with the other super glue make sure it's pushed down and then use a little bit of super glue just go in where that notch is on the ends just let the super glue soak down in and I'll just use a bit of tissue and wipe off the excess and then we go to the other side and again we do exactly the same push down and push that way so the knot is fully engaged just super glue put it soaked down in and a quick wipe to remove the excess and we turn around we do the other end again pushing down and that way to make sure the notch is fully engaged Try not to get any super glue on the inside because that may stop the chassis loading in. And last but not least, the end one on this side. off the excess so that's the ends done now we're going to move to the halfway now what we don't want it to do is to be glued bring it up so you can actually see right, if I do that we don't want it glued like that it's got to be pulled to the outside so again down here we pull it to the outside as I am there just add a bit of glue in there Just soak down in and wipe off the excess. Just hold it there for about 10 seconds, then repeat for the other side. And wipe off the excess. Then move to the next one, next one, next one, and next one. So I'll go ahead and do those. And when you come back, we'll move on to the next part. Right, so I've now glued all my round rounds. Next job is to take some, some sandpaper. I mean, I'm using 80 grit, but 120 grit, something like that. And just gently rub the inside. Give a slight radius, hardly anything, and just to remove any high spots. Right, 
So now we do a trial fit. So you'll need the chassis you made previously, which I have here. And again, just with some, some, some fine sandpaper, just gently rub the outside. Just to remove any high spots. Same at the end. Just where the super glue may have got on the side. PVA. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fit, or do a trial fit, of the chassis into the body. But before we do this, you must make sure that any glue you've used on the inside is dry and is not sticky. Otherwise, once you put this in, it's stuck in there forever. We don't want to do that at the moment. So, cleaned up all the way around. Make sure no glue on the inside. We take our chassis and we drop it in gently and it should fall in quite nicely until I'll take it out so you can see what we're doing. It should it will go in until the actual axle boxes that we glued on early, earlier on both sides, should come down and rest on the inside. Which they do there and they do there. So that's effectively your running chassis now. So that fits in there okay, so we can now move on to the next stage. So take this one out, gently pull it up by the axles, slowly ease it out. Put the chassis to one side and we will now move on to the next section. I'm now going to put the sort of banister type area onto the rear end pieces. Now that goes on the inside. So this piece here, which is quite fiddly and flimsy, will glue around the outside and line up with the engraving. Now you don't actually have to fit this part, it just adds that little bit more realism to it. So it's up to you whether you fit it or not. But if you're going to fit it, it does need to be fitted to this part and also to the other side, to the other end as well, before we actually mount this onto the rest of the chassis. So there's two ways of going about this. One is we can coat that side there with blobs of white PVA. And then obviously when we put it on, do a dry run first obviously, but we need to start, if you can see it, it sort of lines itself up anyway. And then rub your finger around the edge just to make sure it's in line all the way around. Once it's glued in in position, we can then just rub some sandpaper around the outside to curve it off. The other way of doing it is with super glue, and that's a bit by bit job. So what you do is you start off with it in the right position, in one corner, and then with your super glue, just make sure it's lined up properly all the way around. And then with super glue, just come in with a very small amount and just touch it in a couple of places there, and then slowly work your way around. And yeah, that's the other way of doing it with super glue. So I'm going to do the super glue version first, which you'll be able to see me do, and um, then I'll do the other end with white PVA. Right, I've got my super glue ready, and here we go. So the first thing to do is to line up the ends. And make sure it's lined up at the top. So I say this is quite a fiddly one to do. Right, so at this point we can now add a little bit of super glue. So I'm going to add some down the bottom. And 
and just sum up in that corner there and a little bit in that corner there and just keep a little bit of pressure on it and we can move around a little bit and bring it in so it lines up with the engraving on the outside again a little bit more super glue and a little bit at the top so this is the first time I've actually done this so I'm learning at the same time whether super glue or white PVA is better or worse so move down to this position now it may be best now to come to this end or not I'm not sure yeah let's come down here now and then if I've got it slightly misaligned then we can do a bit of sanding up there or if it's slightly misaligned down here it's going to end up looking silly like that so we just bring this one into position that's looking good so again let's put a bit of super glue on there and some in the corner I'll hold it down. Hopefully, I haven't got any super glue on my fingers. And now we can move up to the area I haven't done yet, which is this curve here. So we do one at the top, one just there, and one on the curve there. Again, we'll hold it in position. Right, so that's that way of doing it. Now we'll try option number two, which is the white PVA. I'll just get some white PVA. Now, thinking about it, it may be better to put the PVA on this piece first. So I think I'll try that. Right, let's see how this goes. So we need to put some We don't want to put too much on, it's not a stress point. Quite sure how this is going to work, but let's see what happens. So let's line up one end. At least with PVA, you can move it around a little bit. I just drop them into position. I use a clean screwdriver just to line up the edges. We just work our way around, pushing down as we go. The glue's oozing out, not too worried about that. And again, we'll do it the same way as we did before, we'll then go to the other end. And work our way back up round. I think that may be a better way of doing it. So, uh, yeah, we recommend doing the PVA route, I think. So I also need to leave that to dry, but it would be handy also to remove any glue that's soaked through or squeezed out from the joins.
Make sure you clear off any excess glue in this area because that's where the actual base sits in and it will stop the base seating properly. Right, because this one is going to be flexed, then we obviously do need to make sure the glue is thoroughly dry. Uh, the super glue one should be dry now and that does flex easily. Right, so we now move on to the next section, which is a part we built before, which is this part. And I think it's fairly obvious how things go together. We've got lugs underneath and lugs on there, which obviously are different to the one you constructed, or still which are different to the one you saw constructed, um, because this one is for the bench version and what you've saw construction was for the normal enclosed one. So this will go on and the lugs will engage in the bottom and in the top as you pull it round and it slightly protrudes underneath so there's a lip there that's correct that lip will be filled in with a filler at the end and it should be a nice fit along that position there. So at this point we can then put an elastic band around it and we need to put an elastic band around the other end as well at the same time. So this gets a little bit tricky. So I'm going to put one round there to start with. And then we'll bring this one in. No glue at the moment. So you get your first elastic band fairly low, but clear of where the actual pins stick through. And mirror that at the other end. And then another elastic band on the top half and that will pull it in on the seating area. Now it may just kick out slightly, I'll bring it up so to focus you can see, there we go. You see I've got a bit of movement there, let's turn it so the light's in it. So also we need to hold that in when we're actually gluing it to keep the radius correct. Which is what we would now do. So again, using super glue, we'll start with where it's pulled out slightly. So squeeze it in and then with a very, very small amount of super glue, just touch it where the lug is. Make sure your finger is not where the lug is on the other side, otherwise you'd end up sticking your finger to it. And then with a piece of tissue, remove the excess. That holds that end in there. And then repeat that for the other end. Again, finger clear of the pin very small amount of super glue pushed in and clean off the excess. We clean the excess off because there's a flat plate that sits in here and butts up against the overhang. It gives a clean flat underneath then. Right, so that's pulled in the middle part. Now the elastic band should be strong enough to pull in the outsides onto the actual chassis itself. So there should be no gaps between the end plate and the actual chassis. If there is, then pull it a little bit with your finger or put a stronger elastic band on it. So now we're gonna glue the prongs that stick out 
we add a little bit of super glue again to each one and it will soak in try to keep this in a fairly localized area because although the overlay covers up where these poke through you don't want super glue running everywhere so once that's on there clean tissue wipe it off wipe it away in a downward position so any smearing goes down and then we'll repeat for the other end make sure it's pulled in as a nice fit Again, we go along. I know I've said it before, but this is the first time I've actually put one of these together for real. Up until now, while designing it, I've just been doing bits and bobs and dummy runs and trial fits. So this is the first time I've done an actual complete print laser cut should I say and building it for real so up to date up to now it looks like it's going okay again we wipe away and that's nicely located in there now we move on to the five little ones there I really do have to be careful with the super glue here because the overlay only just covers where that is. So it's the smallest amount. Possible. Just so it soaks down in. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. I'm oh, sorry about that. Uh, best to leave the super glue on there if you wipe it off you're going to smear it and rub onto the wood so because we put such a small amount in there it will soak in and you need to repeat that on this side or end Now leave that to dry before we move on to the next section. Right, the next section is to fit the two upright seats which go either side and then there's a piece that goes on the top. This is a bit fraught uh, but it's very straightforward if you run through what I've done. Because these are an exact length and fit inside their exact length but of course we've put a ridge on each end which means it doesn't go in very easily so what we've got to do is is put it in at a slight angle as I've done there and then tilt it as I'm doing there it's not easy and as you come round you can actually flex this and drop him down into the holes so that's that side done the other side is a bit more difficult because you don't have so much room to manoeuvre. So what we have to do is just to take that one back slightly. Now as you roll it over it will go tight because it's got tapers on it. So with this one we come in on one end there as you can see at this end. And then we have to give it a little bit of flex. Which I did there. As you can see I actually gave it some flexing. And then we move it across and we drop him into his holes as well and then we lean them against each other now you need to glue these two with the top piece to make sure it all lines up because obviously you can be very silly if i was and you could end up gluing it in that position but you need to glue it in dead middle and um, i found the easiest way to glue that dead middle is by using the strip I did this as a dry run earlier on but I will now do this for real so we'll put some white PVA 
along that surface there. Again, I'll do a dry run first. And then you'll find that, of course, this is an exact length as well. And it's got two little pins at each end, which engage in little holes. So again, we have to flex this. So glued it into the first hole. As you can see, it won't go in. So what we have to do is flex it, as I'm doing here. And then find its hole. So I'm now in the hole each end. See the seats can still wobble. So you get the seats in the right position by feeling the finger and thumb and then pushing down onto the smack seats with your fingers and that will then spread the PVA glue out and glue that in position. And then we'll worry about gluing the rest in a moment. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll just get some PVA glue. Put a few dollops on there. Again, it doesn't need too much. And then spread it in with my fingers a little bit. And then if you run your fingers down the edge, I'm going to stop it oozing out. So we go into our hole. And then we flex it up. Into a hole the other end. So I'm now in. And then I just gently push down. Running my fingers along the edge to make sure the seats actually line up with the top part. Right, now we can glue the bottom of the seats. This is best done by accessing from underneath. We've got two slots which have come through. Put a super glue on those slots or pegs. That will soak in. And wipe off any excess. And then we can gain access to where the seats went through, through this hole here. And you can again see the two pegs sticking up through. Again, access those with a bit of super glue. And do the same for the other end. And that's our seats in position. Right, we now move on to we're well, nearly the final stage, and that's fitting the overlays, which there's one, and I've lost the other one. There we are, I just found it. Okay, right. And that's the second overlay. So we can now remove our elastic bands. The overlays are a perfect fit. Again, doing a dummy run, fingers each end, finger on the bottom, and it will follow the contours all the way around. Um, we glue that on with a white PVA, so just make sure that we've got no raised areas there. We've got a little bit of raised there in blue. Just a gentle I'm going to do this in time, so just take the high spots off. Check the other end. Yep, we're smooth all round. Right, so again, the way we put the overlays on is with a white PVA. Spread it over what we call the dirty side. Turn them over, and as we showed just now, line it all up with your fingers and push them down. Be 
which I'll go ahead and do now. So let's come into view so you can see what I'm doing. So just put a little drop on more or less where each join is. It's only a gentle curve and this is very very thin so it does follow the contours quite easily. And then just spread that around a little bit with your finger. And line it up. Fingers each end. Along the bottom. I'll just have to take this out of view while I have a look to make sure I got that square. Yep. Push down all over. Make sure you push down on the ends. Then we can move on to the other end. Right, I'm finding a, a little anomaly that needs to be corrected. When we're gluing, let's do this end so you can see it. When we're doing the lugs that stick through and we glue those, we also need to put a little bit of super glue on the very end where I'm pointing. Because if you can't see it here, I expect, but when it comes round, it does tend to carry straight on out, and there is a very small gap in the end. And obviously, that needs to be pulled in. So, what we need to do is to add a bit of super glue into that corner. And then pull it in with your finger and maybe hold that for about a minute, minute and a half. And I'll do that on the other side while I'm waiting. There's a danger of your finger ending up being super glued. But if it is, it's only a very small amount. So it's just a bit of skin you leave behind. Ends come in. And that ends come in. So we can now fit the other overlay on this end. Okay, we do a dummy run. Make sure everything lines up. And spread it around a bit. effectively a three ply there at the end when it's all dry it's useful probably I'm going to guess to run some sandpaper over just to smooth that out but uh, we'll have a look in a moment right because the when you look from the side this drops down and you've got a ridge there then what we supply is I'll just find it there we go is a effectively a false bottom and that will fit over and will fit down inside flush along the edges and down into the ends so 
And that gives a, a better finish to the edge when you sand it all off. Let's see how it goes. So I'm now going to glue in my overlay or an overlay, false bottom, call it what you like. And for that, again, we use PVA. Sort of self aligns itself. Let's get rid of any excess glue. Right, that completes the construction of that part. Everything else is as per any of the other bug type boxes as far as running gear goes and as far as fitting the coupling goes and as far as changing various right heights. I'll just fit the chassis. This is chassis I made earlier on. That should be a very good fit, which it is. So there we go. There we have our flying bench, I think they call it. Now what I will do is just see how the sanding goes. Again, haven't tried this, so I don't know for sure. Well, considering that's the first build, I think that went together quite well. I can't see any changes I'm going to have to do. So what you've just seen me do is what you'll end up doing yourself. There we go. Please enjoy. Right, the next task is to fit the undercarriage. Now this, as we tried before, slots into the opening underneath. When it slots in, it slots in until the axle box is there, the tops will rest against the edge there. And also this surface here will touch this surface here. So the first thing to do is to make sure we have a slight radius all the way around there. So just go over with a bit of sandpaper or emery paper just to take the edge off there, the corner. And then inside the box. We may have had some glue that's gone into the corner there which will stop the chassis going in. So just take a bit of sandpaper, fold it over and just rub it in the corners to make sure there's no high spots. So you've got a nice 90 degree corner in there. Then load in. You'll find it drops in quite nicely and sits down as you can see onto the axle boxes. Now I've designed this such that when it's in as far as it goes there there is a 10 millimeter distance between the rail head or the top of the rail and the underside of the body. Now this may be a little bit too close for some of you so what you can do is using some of the cutouts that we had from making the roof. Each one of those is two millimetres thick. So you can actually drop one of those in there, drop another one in on the other side, and then when you put the chassis in, it's now sitting on this surface on the packers, and you can now see that you've now got a two mil gap there. This now means that we're now running at a 12 mil height. But obviously you can add more if you want run it 14 mil or put a water pack in you if you want to. When you're happy at the right height you can glue it in or you can just leave it as it is now. It's quite a firm fit in there. If you're going to glue it in then just put a little bit of super glue at that point there and a little bit of super glue just there. 
and that will then hold the chassis inside the bodywork. What's left to do now is to fit the buffer. So as I haven't glued in my chassis, I'll just take him out so I don't drop it on my packers. There's an access hole for putting the nut onto the buffer. It's a standard binny buffer. We have a slot, so it's adjustable. Easiest way to do this is a pair of pin nose pliers. Take the nut. And offer the buffer through the slot where we take the buffer onto the nut. So it's a, a snug fit. This then allows you to move it up and down on the slot. Now when it's on its lowest point, so that's as close to the track as it can go, and if you're running with a 10mm clearance, the buffer sits at 25mm above the rail head, which then allows you with the slot to move it up by 3 if you need to, to 28mm. So you've got a 25 to 28mm movement. Now obviously if you're going to put packers in there, to move the chassis or the bodywork higher then if you're on your minimum of 25 and you move the body up by 2 then you're going to end up with 27 millimeters buffer height just bear that in mind if you start changing the height that's about it so when you've got your buffer height happy in position is then either with a spanner or a pair of power nose pliers just grip the nut Give it a couple of turns just to lock it in position. Check that it's 90 or 90. Check that it's in line with the bodywork. And you now have your coach ready to roll.